Hi everyone, Stepan here. Today I'll continue the series on the Elekine defense or the Aliokin defense with the exchange variation, which is, in my opinion, and uh, in many other people's opinion, uh, the best way for white to play against the Alekine. And even though it might not be uh, the most ambitious attempt, it's definitely solid and it gives white extreme fighting chances. And uh, it could be slightly awkward for black to play because black's pieces are sort of pushed back pushed back on the first three ranks of his position and he only has one weakness to exploit so let's get into the opening e4 knight to f6 the provocative elegant defense e5 of course accepting the challenge knight to d5 d4 d6 black's only move to disrupt white's central control and uh, by the way if you haven't seen the introductory video to the to the elegant please do I will link it in the description below. And now white forces the knight further away, c4, black plays his main move knight to b6. And here, uh, two videos ago, uh, we were looking at the move f4, which is the four pawns attack, which is uh, a more ambitious attempt for white in this position. And today we are going to look at the exchange variation. And the exchange variation is e takes d6, simply exchanging the overextended d5 pawn for the d5 pawn. Uh, there are several upsides uh, to this move for white. Firstly, you are getting rid of your main weakness in the position, and that's the e5 pawn, which is either going to get attacked after d takes e5, or it's going to get attacked uh, after that sometimes uh, during the middle game, and it's definitely a liability. Same as in the Berlin defense for white, or in some other lines where white has a pawn on e5, uh, it's definitely something white has to be concerned about throughout the game. And now when you exchange the pawn, you don't have that worry anymore. Uh, the main branching of ways is, of course, here. You can either take with the C pawn, you can also take with the E pawn, and uh, they are quite different. One thing I would like to say that is that in both variations, uh, according to the engines and theory, white is supposed to have a slight edge, and it should be easier to play for white because white uh, has more space. But one thing that should be emphasized is, is that taking with the C pawn is a more ambitious strike for black. It, there's a very simple reason for that. Uh, firstly, during the game, one of black's main strategies is going to be attacking the d4 pawn, because that's the main weakness in white's position. And if white ever pushes uh, d5, then those knights are going to have wonderful squares on c5 and on e5. So white's main concern is the d4 pawn, and if you take with the e pawn, then the position is, uh, the pawn structure is symmetrical, and it's going to be harder to create imbalances. And the Elekine defense is all about counterplay for black, imbalances for black, attacking chances, and going for the win. So since you play the Elekine defense, you might as well play c takes d6, because it's a more ambitious strike. Uh, we are going to look at uh, one exam example game for each variation, and uh, at the end of the video I'm going to also show you one of my games, uh, which I played in the exchange uh, uh, Elekine Defense. It was my first game in the variation, and I managed to defeat uh, a high-rated opponent. So, e takes d6. Uh, let's first briefly mention the move queen takes d6. Uh, it's not that it loses immediately, but it shouldn't really be played. After c5, white doesn't win a piece. There's queen takes e6, e6 check, queen to e6 check. But after bishop e2, knight to d5, knight to f3, uh, white is just much better. And the engines think this is plus 2. So remember that after e takes d6, queen takes isn't really a playable move. So e takes d6. Here, uh, white has only one option that is optimal. There are three uh, sidelines. The best move here by far is knight to c3, but there are other moves that could be played. Now let me just briefly talk about uh, the setup you want to achieve. Uh, this position is, well, uh, it's better for white at the moment. You have more space in the center, you have central control, you have uh, better squares for your pieces, definitely. Uh, there, are, there is more space for your pieces to maneuver than blacks, and uh, Black is going to play knight c6, bishop e7, castle, or knight c6, g6, bishop g7, castles. I think that the be best setup for black is to play knight c6, bishop e7, castles, bishop f6, I'm sorry, bishop f6, and then you put pressure on this long diagonal, and then you try to gain some space afterwards. And for white, I think that the best, uh, the best setup white could go for is bishop to e3, bishop to d3, and knight to e2. 
why Knights to e2? Knight to f3 is played in many lines uh, of the Alekhine. In fact, the main line goes Knight to f3, not here, but uh, before c4. But there's one slight problem with the move Knight to f3. After Knight f3, we are giving a clear plan to this bishop. And after Knight f3, bishop g4 is a very sensible move, and in fact, it, it is the best move. So if you don't develop your Knight to f3, uh, then Black sort of doesn't know what to do with the bishop. And I, I talked about this sub subject with one Croatian Grandmaster, we were at a tournament in Split, and uh, I played a game in the Alekhine, uh, and I was analyzing uh, some of my ideas with him, uh, happy that he wants to discuss them, we were drinking coffee before the next round, and he talked about uh, Knight F3 for White in the Alekhine, and not this exact setup, but in general, and since he, he's been playing it for a long time, for 20 years, that I... I thought he understood the position, and obviously he does. So he told me that the, the main concern for black is that is when white delays the development of the knight or develops it to e2. Then I started thinking about the position, and I really liked the idea. And that was before I learned the exchange variation properly. So for the game that I'm going to show you at the end of the video, I prepared some lines with the knight going to e2, and I had a great success. So one sideline where white now plays knight to f3, I... I, I mean, it's okay, white is better, but he's better as he's better in every opening. But I wouldn't recommend it because it's easier for black to play. After bishop e7, the best move for white is now h3, stopping bishop g4. And if this is the, a move that you have to play a, a tempo you have to waste, then I'm not sure. Bishop f5 now, of course, there are no better squares for the bishop. Bishop d3, challenging the bishop, takes, takes, castles. White is better, white has... Uh, White has more active pieces and more space, but it's nothing major. And uh, you're going to castle, you're going to put pressure on h7, but I'm not sure that you can achieve that much. So this is one sideline. After he takes d6, uh, another sideline is bishop to e3, uh, which definitely can be played. It mostly transposes if black doesn't know what the best move is. So if black plays normally with bishop to e7, white is just going to play knight to c3, which is the main line, and transpose. But there's a setup black could go for here, uh, and that's g6, knight f3, bishop g7, bishop g5. And in positions like this, where the knight isn't on c3 yet, uh, where pressure is put on the d4 pawn, it's best for black to fianchetto. Queen to d7, knight to c3, castles, bishop e2, c5. d5, rook e8, castles. And... Uh, once again, better for white as in every variation, but definitely playable for black, and I'm not sure. Uh, those sidelines for white, I really, I really wouldn't recommend, because even though they are playable, uh, and even though they might confuse black, I would recommend the main line. One, one more I would like to mention is the very tempting move d5, uh, and it's definitely playable. After d5, once again, you are giving scope to black's knights, so I don't like that. Bishop e7, bishop d3, castles, knight e2, knight 8 to d7, and you can see where these knights are going. It's going to really be really hard to stop them. If you play f4, your bishop is hemmed in. If you play b4, then you're running into a5, and... I don't know, just, I would stick to the main line. I would recommend sticking to the main line. So after e takes d6, knight to c3. That's the best move, definitely. Uh, it develops, it keeps control of, over the center, and it's just the best move. Uh, for black, now bishop to e7 is the main idea. As I said, bishop e7, castles, and continue from there. Uh, white can now choose between three moves once again. Uh, once again, two sidelines revolve around the knight going to f3. Uh, one of them is h3, thus stopping uh, bishop g4 before knight f3. So castles, knight f3, bishop f5. Once again, you get those similar, similar setups. And the other one is knight f3 immediately, castles, bishop e2, bishop g4. And I really like this bishop on d3 instead of on e2. I think it's much more active. And if you either have to play h3 or bishop e2 to relieve this pin, then I, I don't think you have that much. So after uh, the move bishop to e7, I would recommend bishop to d3. This move uh, does two things. Firstly, it develops the bishop to the best possible square. Secondly, it keeps the option for white to play knight to e2. You're not going to play knight e2 if your bishop is still on f1. So knight e2 uh, controls the weakness on d4, same as from f3. The difference is that it's not controlling e5, but as I said, it's not giving the option of, of bishop to g4. And in bishop g4 lines, you can play f3 to force the bishop farther away. So bishop to d3, in my opinion, is the best move. Knight c6. 
Black can also castle here, but that transposes uh, knight g2 e2. Bishop g4 is one of the uh, main moves here, and white now, well, your pawn is attacked, so you either have to play f3 or you have to play bishop to e3. Uh, both are playable. Castles loses a pawn, of course. So I think I would just recommend f3 because that just forces the issue. Uh, after bishop g4, bishop e3, castles b3. The position is still playable. You didn't play f3, you kept the bishop here and you are going to play uh, perhaps queen to c2 if you ever get a3 in, but still playable. I think f3 or bishop to e3 is a, is a personal choice you can make. So after bishop g4, f3 is the main line, bishop to h5, castles, bishop g6, and now b3. The difference is that this pawn isn't on f2 and that this bishop is on g6 instead of g4. Not a big difference, but still uh, something. Bishop to f6, as I said, putting pressure on the weakness on d4. Bishop e3, and now we come to Black's main idea in the in the exchange variation in the lines where uh, Black takes uh, with the e pawn, and that's at some point to fix the d4 weakness, and that's very important. How do you fix the weakness? You play the move d5. So after d5, uh, White basically has only one move. Uh, if you take, then you have a horrible weakness on d4, and you're going to lose the pawn eventually. So the main move and the only move is c5. And now uh, you can see the purpose of the move b3 and I'm going to show you what I played in my game. At the end of the video I didn't play b3 so it was possible for my opponent to play bishop here, uh, to play knight here and to play knight here, knight a4 and knight c4, which is a huge difference because I gave black much more option, many more options. But here after c5 if b3 had been played then knight to c8. Usually after c5, if b3 hadn't been played, I've studied that uh, after my game, knight c4 and knight a4 are, are still mistakes, but there are exceptions to the rule and sometimes it can work. So okay, after knight to c8, this is what you get in the exchange variation with d takes d6. Uh, let's look at the position now. Uh, the weakness on d4 is still a problem for white. Both sides have two nice bishops. If black manages uh, moving the knight from c6 and playing c6, then his pawn on d5 won't be as weak. White has ideas like knight to f4. Uh, I mean, you can sacrifice a pawn here and exchange it for the d5 pawn to get rid of your weakness, but this has to be calculated carefully. And the, the position is definitely uh, straight for, more straightforward to play for white than for black. I mean, it's it's really awkward to have to develop your knight from c8 now. Of course, it's going to e7, but I think it's much easier to play for white who has all of his pieces developed. The normal plan is for white to attack along the king side and along the e file and to cramp black's pieces down as much as possible. If you can manage to keep those pieces at bay, then great. Another plan is simply b4, uh, a3, b4. Uh, you can also play b4 immediately, and if knight takes, uh, then you have this move. Uh, so this is also playable. And I mean, definitely more attacking chances for white. So you can either uh, decide to play along the e-file and the king side or along the queen side. Because if you manage to push these pawns through, then it's highly likely that you're going to be able to create a passed pawn because the d5 pawn might fall. So let's look at one game. Uh, this is the game between Peter Leko and Vasily Ivanchuk, played in 2007. Uh, Peter Leko had, had the white pieces. He continued with knight to c3 here, which is the best move. I've left the evaluation bar so you can see the what the engine thinks. Uh, bishop e7, the main move. Bishop to d3, the main move. Knight c6, and now knight g to e2. Uh, not allowing bishop to g4. And here, uh, this is an idea which I didn't mention because it's really rare, but Vasily Ivanchuk is an amazing player, so there must be something behind it. I wanted to show it to you. And the move is a5, uh, which seems very aggressive, leaving this square unattended, and now white can play uh, knight to b5 at his own leisure. But Peter Leko decided to ignore that. He played castles, and now a4, which is slightly dubious already. Now white is better but it's not really sure why it's not really clear why bishop to e3 was played uh, here by peter leko which is supposed to be a mistake although i don't understand why it's a simple developing move uh, the engine wants to play knight to d5 which okay i mean 
you are exchanging a pair of knights. This knight is definitely better than the knight on b6, so I don't understand that. Knight b4, attacking the bishop, d5, ignoring that, castles, knight d4, knight takes d3, queen takes d3, knight to d7. Uh, the knight is obviously going into c5, so it's clear what black wants to do. And I would just like to show you uh, what white has achieved here and what I like about the exchange variation for white. If you manage to play the move d5, which is going to be rare, you're going to have a lot, a lot of space because your pawn is controlling c6 and d6. If black plays d5 and you play c5, then you are going to be controlling b6 and d6 and you're going to have attack along uh, these diagonals uh, sorry along these diagonals and you're going to have much more attacking many more attacking chances than than black so peter leko definitely achieved something here even though the engines think uh ivanchuk's a5 a4 was sort of justified queen c2 was played here in anticipation of knight c5 knight c5 rook a d1 bishop g5 rook f e1 you can see how harmonious uh, all of leko's pieces are and he basically has no problems in the position bishop g4 and this is what i was talking about it's really weird for black uh, when he doesn't know what he should do with his bishop this bishop obviously doesn't belong to g4 now f3 chasing the bishop away bishop takes e3 rook takes e3 bishop to d7 knight b to d5 the weak square uh, Ivanchuk created with a5 a4 Rook to e8, challenging the rook. Rook takes e8, bishop takes e8, queen to e2. Now, uh, white is obviously controlling the open file. Uh, white has knight versus bishop, which is in this position definitely better, uh, because the knights have a lot more jumping squares to go to. And they think white is better. Bishop d7, rook to e1, uh, challenging the file. h5, queen to d2. And I'm not going to go much further into this game. I think white has already achieved everything he wanted to. And uh, Peter Leko went on to win the game. You can you can watch the whole game if you'd like by yourself uh, and analyze it. I'm just going to browse through the moves to show you how uh, Leko won. So he routed his knights, uh, highlighting the strength uh, in the difference of the minor pieces. The fact that the knight is much better than the bishop here. This was an interesting decision. Uh, not taking the knight here, even though I think he could, uh, not taking the pawn. But I think this was playable. I'm not sure what's so wrong about this position. But anyway, uh, rook to a8, uh, knight d6, knight d3, rook to e7, and you can see that this is total domination of Ivanchuk's position, and soon Ivanchuk resigned. So the variation with uh, e takes d6 is symmetrical, and it doesn't give black that many chances, but still it's possible to create them and you can see Ivanchuk tried with a5 which failed but there are more ideas to find and as I said I think white is always slightly better white has more space his main problem is the is the pawn on d4 so black's main idea to exploit that is d5 forcing c5 and then you have a clear target to attack throughout the game uh, now let's look at the positions with c takes d6 C takes d6, asymmetrical, uh, creating imbalance, imbalances straight, straight out of the opening and giving black more chances. Uh, I think you should play this if you are ambitious. Uh, knight c3, once again, the main move. d5 can be played. And in fact, we are going to look at a game uh, between Alexei Shirov and Daniel Dubov, in which d5 was played. So the main response is e5, knight c3, bishop e7. And you can see that this pawn structure, sort of a Benoni pawn structure, uh, with the d6 weakness, is strange for black and hard to defend. We are going to look at that. But in the game, I'm, I'm going to show you black won with, with his amazing uh, counterplay. But the main move after c takes d6 is knight to c3. Uh, g6 uh, this is the difference uh, in these lines you are going for a sort of modern uh, setup sicilian setup sicilian dragon setup uh, where you have a pawn on d6 pawn on g6 and you fianchetto and you're basically uh, well you, you are playing the sicilian against a d4 setup against the classical d4 setup imagine black playing d4 c4 knight c3 white playing d4 c4 knight c3 and uh, black playing g6 bishop g7 d6 and going for a weird sicilian with the knight on b6 so this is a system i would recommend if you know some theory in the in the sicilian bishop to e3 bishop g7 rook to c1 castles b3 
b3 is very important defending the c4 weakness uh, here black could choose between two moves there is one sideline which i would recommend and that's the move knight to c6 uh, and after knight c6 d5 knight e5 bishop e2 uh, white has this strong pawn chain which is controlling a lot of key squares so i really like the position for white black's main response here is f5 sort of weakening the position even more f4 knight g4 I'm not sure, bishop takes, f takes, knight g2, e2, I think this pawn is a liability and that white just has a clear edge. Uh, I mean, I, I still like it more than the main line, but after knight c6, d5, knight e5, bishop e2, f5 might be a move I would avoid. I like this, this position for black up until f5, and even though white has more space, I think it's playable. You can reroute your knights, you can play around with them and force some issues. The bishop pair isn't really that strong, especially the light squared bishop for white. I think that black's bishop is better here. So instead of f5, h5 can be played, a5 can be played, rook to e8 can be played. The One of the moves which scores best for black uh, is f5 and then rook to e8 is the second one. Knight e to d7 can also be played. I mean... Black has less space, that much is clear, but if you play f5, then you're accepting too many weaknesses. Knight g4, bishop takes, f takes, this is really hard to play. And the main line after b3 uh, is the very aggressive e5. After e5, uh, white could play d5, uh, trying to make this into a weakness, but the main move is in fact d takes e5, d takes e5, and exchanging the queens and going for c5. And this way, uh, white is going for one simple idea of a pawn majority on the queen side. And I think that exchanging the queens is more than justified. Even though black's queen side is still undeveloped, which is sort of useful in this case, because you can stop the pawn majority, I think that three against two on the queen side uh, is going to be overwhelmingly good for white. And in any endgame, white is, of course, much better. He has these bishops supporting the queen side pawn chain. Whoa. Uh, and... Uh, yeah, even though the king is still in the center, there isn't much danger because the queens got exchanged. So I think that this, this is a great idea for white. So after b3, uh, e5, the main move for black, results in a queen exchange and in white going for the endgame, which black definitely doesn't want in the Alakine defense. Uh, let me come back to, to knight to c6 then. So even though e5 is the best move, knight to c6 might be the best choice because you avoid the endgame. So d5, knight e5, bishop e2, f5, okay, the best move. I would still recommend h5 or rook to e8. I mean, at least this way you are gaining space and you are not creating weaknesses. So the endgame after e5, uh, where were we? c5, knight 6 to d7, bishop to c4, knight c6, knight f3, h6. I mean, better for white and uh, an annoying edge which which uh, black has to deal with and live with. So let's go uh, over the opening once again. So e4, knight f6, e5, knight e5, d4, d6, c4, knight to b6, e takes d6, e d6, uh, slightly more conventional, symmetrical pawn structure. Black is going for the weakness on d4. He wants to fix it with d5, provoke c5. White wants to play either on the queen side, a3, b4, or along the e-file and attacking along the along the di diagonals to the king. After e takes d6, <coughs> e takes d6, black's plan is bishop e7, castles, bishop f6. White's plan is bishop d3, knight g2, e2, knight to c3, castles. Black will have some problems with this bishop, if bishop g4 then f3, if white ever plays knight f3 then bishop g4 is a better move. So let's look at Shirov Dubov. Uh, coming back to this position, knight b6, e d6, c d6. Uh, in this position Alexei Shirov uh, went for the move d5. Daniel Dubov did play the best way possible, e5. And I wanted to show you this game because it's a perfect example of just how dangerous the Alekhine uh, defense can be. Knight c3. Uh, a sensible move, bishop e7, and now a mistake from Shirov, f4, he's known for his attacking play, and obviously he's threatening to take here and to create uh, a passed pawn, if black recaptures, but Daniel Dubov sort of uh, outplayed him if in his own aggressive game, he just castled here, allowing that. 
Knight f3, Shirov didn't want to take immediately, bishop g4 pinning the knight, and now f takes e5, another mistake, uh, which, well, black doesn't have to take it, just knight 8 to d7 developing another piece, b3 trying to fianchetto the bishop, but doesn't really do anything about the kingside play, and now bishop h4 check. Uh, the knight is pinned, of course, uh, king to d2 was played, if white plays g3, then there's the amazing knight takes e5, temporarily sacrificing a piece, if you take the bishop, I'm going to take the knight, uh, the best move is bishop e2, and now knight f3 check, bishop f3, and now another amazing idea, bishop to f6, leaving this, po uh, leaving this bishop on pre and taking the knight, so bishop takes g4, knight takes c3 check, bishop d2, bishop a1, Obviously, this is uh, just over. So after bishop h4 check, Alexei Shirov played king to d2. And now d takes e5, which is a slight inaccuracy. Knight takes e5 was better. I'm not sure why uh, d5 was played. Knight takes seems much more natural. But d takes e5, sort of letting Shirov get back, back into the game. Bishop e2. Uh, bishop takes f3, another slight mistake. G takes f3. And now... Uh, Two twenty-six, twenty-seven hundred grandmasters had a position where black was minus two, and now it's all zeros. So that goes to show how hard to play the Alekhine is. Bishop g5 check, king c2, bishop c1, queen c1, knight c8, knight to e4, h6. I'm not going to go into the game much farther. Black did manage to win eventually, even though white is now already better. But just let's look at this position and how aggressive it was. For black, so after d5, uh, white's second uh, most common move, e5, knight c3, and with e5, black is already accepting this huge weakness here. Bishop e7, f4, a mistake, castles, knight f3, bishop g4, f5, and you can see how fast white could get in trouble if he isn't careful. Okay. Uh, the last thing I wanted to show you is one of my games. You can also find it in the Road to GM series. Uh, Let's get to this position, he takes d6. My opponent took with the e-pawn. Uh, my opponent is 2050-something, Romeo Shorich. Uh, so, 200 points stronger than I am. I played knight c3, bishop e7, bishop to d3, uh, wanting to develop my knight to e2. He castled. Uh, the main move here is knight to c6 for a reason, uh, because after knight to c6, you are threatening the d4 pawn, forcing the issue. I developed my, my knight here anyway, and now he played bishop to g4, and now you can see the difference. Since the knight hadn't been developed to c6 yet, if you imagine the knight on c6 and the king still in the center, so knight c6 instead of castling, he would actually be threatening knight takes d4, and now he isn't, so I don't have to play f3, which I think is a weakening move, so I simply played bishop to e3. Knight c6 now, and now I can castle. I still don't have to play f3. Uh, he uh, here uh, made a strange decision. I... I don't know why he played this, he took on e2. I mean, his bishop is awkward, but giving it up still with this bishop here, I, I don't think it, it was a good idea. Bishop takes e2, and here he played d5, and now c5, of course. And now we come to the major difference uh, from the main lines. I haven't played b3, so he has the option of knight a4 and knight c4. He went for knight to c4. Uh, and now this position is already plus two for white. In fact, I took on c4, he took on c4, and now I had a winning move, which I didn't see, uh, that was queen to e2, simply attacking the pawn. And uh, his best try is bishop to f6, and after I take, queen takes c4, even though he has three attackers on my pawns, he can't take it, because if knight takes d4, rook a to d1 wins the knight. Okay, so after d takes c4, I didn't go for the pawn immediately, even though I could have, there is no way for him to defend after queen e2. I played d5 instead, wanting to get rid of my weakness on d4 and expand in the center, and this was better for me uh, as well. So if you ever manage to uh, to get a position in which you can play d4, which is going to happen, happen very rarely, then I think d5... Uh, d5 is a good is a good move. So coming back to this position, bishop takes e2, bishop takes e2, d5, c5. Positions where you haven't played b3 actually allow knight c4 and then bishop takes. So after knight c4, bishop takes, d takes, you are getting rid of the blockade. So after the game, I started playing with the idea of never playing b3 because I like this position. So whatever, d5, knight to e5, defending the pawn, queen to a4, attacking the pawn, and now just threatening bishop to d4 and forcing the issues here. Here he played b6, uh, bishop d4, gaining a tempo, 
knight to d3 and now uh, taking here immediately would run into pawn takes or bishop takes or knight takes because he has three attackers so uh, there was one idea i was calculating d6 cd6 cb6 ab6 uh, queen takes c4 which was okay but after uh, knight to d3 i played c takes b6 a takes b6 and now queen takes c4. Uh, I calculated knight takes b2 for a long long time and concluded that, that he couldn't play it and this was my calculation knight takes b2 queen to b5 attacking the knight bishop a3 is the only move to save the knight and now I have knight to b1 simply attacking the bishop. If rook a5 queen to e2. Rook e8 attacking the queen once again queen to g4 and it's inevitable now he has to he has to lose the piece, and that's just it. So after queen takes c4, knight takes pawn isn't a possibility. Knight c5 uh, is the main move. And now rook f to e1, just developing more pieces. Bishop d6, bishop e5, challenging the bishop. Why not exchange? Rook e8, uh, bishop d6, queen d6, b4 chasing the knight away, knight a6. And here he went horribly wrong for some reason. He just uh, lost the piece, he allowed uh, rook takes e8, rook takes e8, queen takes a6, that's it, he tried queen, the, queen e5, but after queen uh, to d3, I'm defending both my knight, my rook, uh, and uh, checkmate on the back row, so here he resigned, so I won against the high-rated opponent with the exchange variation, because I, I think because I delayed the development of my knight, I think that was a good idea, and he, even though he is a more experienced player than I am, he didn't know what to do with the bishop, so he, he ended up giving it up. Uh, okay, uh, let me know what you think about the variation. I hope the example games helped. Uh, from now on, I'm going to include the example games in the opening videos. I've decided to do that. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Let me know what you think about the variation and about the video. Thanks very much for the support and the kind comments and stay tuned for more chess. See you later. Bye-bye.